In this video, I'm going to show you how we can remotely control an Arduino using a remote control. This remote control works by having an IR LED here, and you will see it when I press it here. You see that blinking? You see that on my camera, but on your bare eyes, you cannot see that because your eye is only sensitive to visible light. For this IR transmitter to, to work, we need a receiver. This is the receiver that we we're going to use. This is a VS1838B, and this module has a board with two resistors and an LED indicator. We just need to put this in this orientation. So the input will be this side, the ground, and then the VCC is here. So let's put it there. It should look, it should look like this. Next will be the connection for the Arduino, the VCC, the ground, the, the input pin here will have the signals that is received by this IR receiver coming from this IR transmitter. So they're in pair. From here, it will go to there. So they should have a direct line of sight. Else, it will not work or the, the signals will not be decoded properly. Let's now connect this board to our Arduino. VCC will be for the 5 volts, ground will be for the ground, and the in will be on our digital pin 11. We can change that on our code, but on our code, we will use pin 11. As you see, the headers are now connected here, and then on its respective digital pins or digital headers of the Arduino, the ground, and then the pin 11. For this video, we will use this buzzer as our output. We will control this using our remote control here. 1, we will turn it on. And 0, we will turn it off. So let's connect this to a digital pin. Mm, I will select pin 4. The buzzer is now connected on the ground and on the pin 4. There, on the pin 4. And now we're complete on our setup. Let's now... Hook this on Arduino on Arduino software, on and see if how we can code this so that it will respond on this remote control. Let's now open our Arduino software, and we need a library for this. This is the library that we need to use. Let's go to Manage Libraries, and let's let's search for the IR Remote. Okay, as you see here, the IR Remote is already installed. And you just have to install it. Just select the version. I'm using 2.2.3 and click install if it's not yet installed on your Arduino software. For more information, you can click this more info and you will go to the GitHub GitHub repository of the IR Remote Library. After installing the software, you should now be able to see the examples on the examples here on file examples. In the examples, we will look for the IR Remote. And in this IR remote examples, you will see lots of different examples, sketches, and the one that we will use is the IR relay. Let's click this and let's open that sketch. Okay, this is the IR relay. And as you see, there will be two variables here that will define the receive pin and the relay pin. So the receive pin, this is the this is where our IR transmitter is connected and on the relay pin this is where our buzzer is connected let's now proceed on the code and see how it will behave this function is void dump and it will just show us the decoded signal what type it is if it's NEC if it's Sony RC5 RC6 so that's useful then if we go here on setup, we will see that the relay pin and the LED built-in, which is pin 13, is initialized. On the loop, we will see that whenever there is a signal that is decoded, that's why it's here on the if statement, the relay pin and the pin 13 will be toggled. If it's on, it will become off. If it's off, it will become on. Our relay pin is where our buzzer is connected. Let's now upload this code and see how it will behave. 
is now compiling the sketch. Now it's done uploading. Let's see the serial monitor. We're not seeing anything yet. Be sure that your voltage is 10,600. Let's click anything on the remote. Now it's on. Now it's off. Whatever we whatever we press on the remote, it will just toggle the status. Our goal now is to check what would be the output or what will be the signal if we press 0. Let's clear first the UART. This will be the 0. Let's press it again. This is 0 and this will be 1. Now we know what is the decoded signal for the 0, which is FF6897, and for the 1, which is FF30CF. Let's update this code so that the, the, the relay or the buzzer and the LED will only turn on if we press 1 and it will turn off if we press 0. This is the IR relay example, but I modified few parts of the code. The first step is for us to get the results that value. This is the one that is shown on our on our UART uh, monitor or serial monitor like the FF6897 because this one is in hexadecimal. What I want is to be this one in integer so that's why I create a variable receive data and get the results that value. That results that value can be seen on the dump function here above. The results value. But it's still printed on hex. So now, we can see that the value is this FF6897 will be equivalent to 12495. That's for 0 and for 1, it will be equivalent to 26775. Let's now upload this code and see how well, how our circuit will behave. I got an error on uploading because I forgot that this code block should have a parenthesis here. So the if and the else should have that both. Now I updated the code blocks here with this parenthesis and I also interchange the low which is for the FF30CF, I think I did it wrong. And then the high for the 12495, which is equivalent to hex FF6897. That is based on our int receive data because we serial print, print that here. And I've seen that this is equivalent to the integer equivalent with this. Let's now upload this code and see if there will be no errors. Is now uploaded, so let's see how it, the circuit, our circuit, will behave. Let's now open our serial monitor again and see the output on our serial monitor. And I will now press the button one, button zero. You see, it only behaves when. It can satisfies these if else code blocks. I hope you see this video useful and interesting, and please don't forget to like and subscribe on our video. Thank you.